What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. Before we get started, we have a huge announcement. Practical Machinist is launching a job board. We're gonna get into some of the details of getting hired and hiring in this video, but before we do, if you're an employer and you have a job you'd like to post, you can get a free listing right now by emailing jobs at practicalmachinist.com. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised, today we are gonna talk about hiring, getting hired, and some of the concerns about that. Um, first off, I think it's important if you are new to the trade or you know, you're thinking about getting into machining, one of the big things you should know about and a concept to understand that we are experiencing as a trade and you know, a lot of the hands-on trades are experiencing is the skills gap. The skills gap is kind of what it says on the tin. Um, there is a gap in skilled labor right now in the trades. Um, we are experiencing it. I know a lot of the uh, electronics trades are dealing with it. It's, it's a difficult situation and I think it's important to understand if you're trying to get into uh, machining because it is a situation you are going to have to deal with because all of us are dealing with it right now. A um, little background on it. As you may have know, my shop has been around since uh, the late 80s. My, uh, my old man started the shop and at one point we had about 15 guys here. Um, 15 guys at 15 manual mills and grinders who would come in and work every day. Uh, there was a very large pool of talented workers around here. You know, every single one of those guys would likely have been a Red Seal machinist, which in Ontario where I am is the trade certification you can get from the government. Um, if they weren't a Red Seal machinist, they were most likely, you know, they'd still been in the trade for 10, 15 years. At some point when we got into CNC, that dropped off. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that you do not need as many guys these days to run a machine shop as you used to back in the day. This, I don't know if this is the only reason that that happened, but you know, why people left the trade, but at one point, a lot of people left the trade. Uh, you know, 2000s, late 90s, there was a bit of a mass exodus from the trades. You could blame the fact that, you know, for years we were all told we had to go to university and get into a, you know, real career if we didn't want to be flipping burgers. You can, you can point your finger at a lot of different reasons why this happened. But what's happened now is there is a big shortage of guys who know what they're doing. Um, you know, there are still a lot of good guys who are older, but they are starting to retire. There are guys who are very good who are coming into the trade, but they don't have the years of hand-on experience that, you know, there was a pool of guys out there that had, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So now we're dealing with a situation where there's guys leaving the trade, guys coming into the trade, but there's a big gap in the middle of skilled labor. I'm dealing with it. Um, you know, as you guys know, I'm trying to hire. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been trying to find another guy in here. Um, a lot of people are trying to hire. I know when I was down in uh, the Chicago area talking to some shops down there, some of those guys were putting bonuses out there of five to $8,000 signing bonus to get a skilled guy on the floor. This is how severe this situation is these days. So when it comes down to it, if you are trying to get into the trade right now, this is a great time to look at your options on how to become a machinist, um, how to become a programmer, how to get involved in the trade. There are lots of places hiring. There is lots of job security. It is a great time to be getting into the trade. So if you are looking to get into machining, there are a few different ways you could take to get into machining and a few different paths you could take from there. So the first one is the age old go to school. So you can go to Precision Machining Trade School. Um, depending on where you are in the world, you know where I am in Ontario, you can go to some place like Georgian College or Centennial College and take a two year course. This is usually called PMT or Precision Machine Trades. It's a course to kind of get you, it's not a super in-depth course, but it's a course to get you involved with milling machines and lathes and learning how to be good with your hands. It is not mandatory, but it is one way to get into the trade. Um, you know, if you're someone who's kind of looking for something to do after high school, it is a great thing to try because, you know, some courses are one year, some courses are two years. It's not a huge commitment. And, you know, I've said it before, guys, but if you get good with your hands, that's something no one can ever take away from you. So it is an investment in yourself, whether you end up going into the trade or not. Um, highly, highly recommend it. The next way is you can do an apprenticeship. 
This is the most traditional way people have learned trades. Um, you know, I was an apprentice. We have apprentices here. And what an apprentice is, is it someone who gets in basically kind of at the bottom level of a machine shop. You know, maybe you're an operator, maybe you're a general laborer, but you get involved in the apprenticeship program. Where I am in Ontario, and I know in a lot of the states it's the same, it is a state or provincially regulated and supported program where you will get to go out to, for instance, in Ontario, you go out to a shop like mine, we bring you in, we employ you for 40 hours a week or 44 hours a week, whatever it is, and you basically job shadow guys who have been in the trade for a long time. Um, this is a very, very in-depth trade. There is a lot to learn. And the best way I find is by shadow, and you know, obviously everybody thinks, but is by shadowing someone who's been doing it for a long time. That way you can at least start to pick up little bits every day and all of a sudden you're a competent machinist. What goes along with that as well is often you'll get put out, you know, in Ontario, I can only speak from my own experience, but you can get put out on block release or day release. So either you go on one day a week to a trade school or you go in a block for block release of six to eight weeks to trade school. So it's a very good combination of hands-on in the shop, practical learning, and going to learn the actual theory behind these things. And the good thing about the apprenticeship program, guys, is you do, at the end of it, if you pass, get your red seal. Um, like I said, red seal is a certification that lets you command a much higher wage because you have to write a test that proves you know what you're doing. Very, very valuable, guys. Um, I have found the quantity of red seal certified guys out there in Ontario right now to be completely lacking um, as part of the skills gap. It used to be that you could find guys, you know, as a standard to have a red seal. Now I very, very rarely come across guys who have finished the red seal. So if you were thinking about it and you were in Ontario, I highly recommend it. Um, depending on where you are in the States or in England or wherever it may be, there may be a regulation or a certification you can get. I always recommend getting them if you can guys, because you know, you may not need it where you are now, but if one day you need to change jobs, it's always good to have those certifications behind you to prove you know what you're doing. Um, the last way you can get into machining, guys, is basically by going out and getting involved in the associated trades with machining. So, you know, you can go to become an engineer. You can go and focus more on computer programming. You can become a millwright. Millwrights are guys who fix machines. Um, there's a lot of different paths you can take that are alternative into machining but they're all very, very valuable. And the thing is guys, they're all in such high demand right now. Um, wages are going up, uh, demand is going up. So if you can get involved in any of these trades, it's gonna be very, very helpful. The one thing you do wanna keep in mind if you're trying to get into machine trades is that although you may start at one shop, you may want to look for another job afterwards. Um, I know we've talked before about how we don't like as employers looking at a resume and seeing a guy who bounces around every six months from shop to shop. But finding another job at times is going to be critical to your career. Um, would I love it as if guys came into my shop and stayed here for 30 years and never went anywhere else? Of course, is that realistic? No. Um, as your career develops, guys, it is important to go to different shops, not only to be able to you know, get the incremental increases in wages as you go, but to go out and see different things. Um, if someone came into my shop and only worked at my shop ever, you're going to be exposed to three axis mills, you're going to be exposed to wire EDM, and you're going to be exposed to straight turning lathes if you started today. You're not going to be exposed to things like five axis mills or, you know, uh, live tooling lathes or fabrication or laser cutting. So being able to go to different shops and learn different skills, you know, it's going to be critical. The more things you're exposed to, the more things, you know, the more money you can command, the more useful you are to an employer, the more hireable you are. When you're going out to look for another job, guys, there are a couple of different ways to find those jobs. First off are job boards. So, you know, there's the typical ones I won't list here. I'm sure you know them all. Practical Machinist, as I mentioned before, is launching one. Um, they're very, very helpful because you can go out and like, you know, looking through job ads, see a lot of employers in one spot and be able to compare those jobs, apples to apples, oranges to oranges against each other very quickly. Um, it would be considered the shotgun approach. So you can go and you can apply to a lot of places at once. I always recommend doing your research on a company before you apply. Don't just blindly go and literally shotgun out a bunch of applications because you're wasting other people's time. You're wasting your own time. 
Uh, if you apply for a job somewhere and you don't even you know, decide to be interested in an interview, that employer is probably not gonna bring you in for an interview if you decide to apply there again in the future. Um, I've had that situation happen to me where I get the same three resumes you know, every five years. Be careful, but don't be afraid to apply for jobs, guys. You know, Even if you may not be completely sold on what that company is selling, it's always worth going in and talking to them. The other way to find jobs, guys, that I find extremely useful is word of mouth. Some of the best guys I have had here and some of the best jobs that I have had over the years have been by word of mouth. Um, people who are employers may not always formally be looking for someone. They may not always be at the point where they're looking to post an ad and really open it up broadly. But a lot of times employers have in the back of their head that if someone who was good came along or was available, they'd hire them on. Um, with the skill gap situation, guys, most employers like myself, we can't afford to be picky on our timing with hiring. Even if I didn't need a very skilled guy right this second, which I do, if one came in the door, I would find the work to keep him busy in order to get him on my team. Because trying to find that guy when you need him is very, very difficult. So the contacts that you make at your PMT course or during your apprenticeship or on a place like the Practical Machinist Forum or Instagram, talking to them and developing those relationships with those people is gonna be critical for your success because they're gonna have first access and knowledge about jobs that may not even be listed yet or about employers that are thinking about bringing somebody on but haven't really decided to pull the trigger yet. And that can get you in before the rest of the competition you know, opens up because some of these roles may be filled before they even get to be posted. So being able to be aware of when those opportunities come up and you know, having your ear to the ground about who's doing what out there is going to be very, very helpful. As I mentioned guys, Practical Machinist is launching a brand new job board. This is gonna be super exciting. Um, as you guys know, if you watch our channel and you've been to the Practical Machinist forums, you know that you know, Practical Machinist is the spot where machinists go to connect, connect to uh, you know, share knowledge, to ask their questions, to bounce ideas off each other. So it makes sense to connect these machinists who are trying to hire and are looking for a job at the place where they already hang out. So if you are an employer, you can get your free listing right now by sending an email with all the information about your job to jobs at practicalmachinist.com. If you are looking for a job, there's gonna be a link here where we can, you can go out and find a job on the Practical Machinist uh, job postings. I, if it has not come out by the time this video comes out, it's gonna be there shortly, but just know this is happening. It's very exciting. I personally have already got my listing up on there, so if you are trying to hire, I highly recommend sending them an email right now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe below if you wanna see more videos. You take care.